Hey yo, this is Guido coming at you with the Tactics Talk, guys. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate the support of the channel as always. Today we're going to do a review of the new Tier 8 Italian Heavy Auto Reloading Tank. Not a premium. This is a Tech Tree tank on the brand new Tech Tree line, and it's the first tank in the line at Tier 8 that has the auto reloading gun. It's very similar to the Basante. We're going to compare and contrast those just a little bit. Obviously, the Basante is a premium tank. And we're going to obviously look at this as well against other Tech Tree tanks. Let's get started. As you can see, here she is in all her glory. I've got the, the Roman decals, the decals, and the various emblems and whatnot stuck all over this thing. Pretty cool looking tank, actually. Pretty modern looking. So what is this? Well, it's a development more than likely that never saw the light of day. Captain Quinzio suggested the idea of a tank division consisting of two types, Caro, battle tanks, Caro de Combatimento, combatimento <laughs> and Caro, what? General purpose tank. Okay, his concept presented a 50-ton vehicle with a powerful gun. <laughs> I would like to present a concept for a tank also with the powerful gun <laughs> for combat. That's, uh, anyway, <laughs> that is not much to go on. A napkin tank, right? This was, I don't even know if there were blueprints of this one in particular, but it's kind of got the Italian lines, at least as far as Wargaming has put into World of Tanks. Looks like a more slender Basante. That's important because that's kind of what it is. That is kind of what it is. Decently sloped front armor. Fairly large lower plate. Sloped. Interestingly angled front turret. This represents more of an MBT look that you might see with the, the double the uh, double uh, sloping, I guess you might call it right there. Very flat side turret on that bad boy and some pretty decent depression. All right, so your general overview. It's got four crew members in it. You've got a commander, a gunner, a driver, and loader, and your radio operator is attached to the commander. We'll talk about that in Tech Tree Considerations. In fact, we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So if you come to the Italian line, it splits off from the P40 BIS, P43 BIS. goes to the Caro P88. You can see my review on that. That's on my channel as well. Then we're on the uh, Progetto, and it says Progetto 54, which is what it comes up as in the game, even though down here it's the Progetto CC55 Mod 54. <laughs> Four crew members will be the same until you get to the Rhinocerante, and I mentioned this in my P88 video. This becomes a three crew member tank at that point. That really sucks, but at least you can move them up here. What happens is you end up losing, I think, your... So who goes away? I don't remember, to be quite honest. Loader, commander, gunner, driver, loader. You lose your loader. You lose your loader, and I think it gets dumped on top of the commander when you get to the tier 10. So tech tree considerations, the rest of the things you want to think about. I did not play this thing stock. Okay, I unlocked it, but you've only got one module to unlock. In fact, you only have to go through one gun to get onto the tier 9. I would recommend un unlocking all these things. However, it only took me, how many? 30 battles, I believe. 30 battles to get through to the tier 9. Why? Because I had times 5s. You've got the extra experience you can put on for a win if you have premium account five times a day i did that every time you run personal reserves it is unbelievable how fast you can get through these tanks if i had to unlock the modules it would have taken me longer so fully unlocked modules with free experience all of the extra bonuses and i am through a tier 8 tank and 30 battles i will leave it to you as to whether that is a good or bad thing for the game i kind of live on both sides of that fence but that's a video for another time. Let's take a look at the 3D model on this thing. All right, the armor is uh, is not much to write home about. It, it is okay on the turret at about, I wanna say it's 180 or 185. I, I get the numbers between that and the Basante mixed up. So that is, eh, it's okay, but you can see it's not amazing. Some of that slope because of the, the, the front armor of the turret doing this kind of action does give you some decent relative or effective armor at 239 and 236 but you can see right there once people start dabbing two most tier eights are going to start going through the turret the front plate of the upper armor is pretty thick at this effective 
angle, but once you start going hold down, it actually gets pretty decent. Pretty decent hold down. You, you know, you get into that kind of auto bounce ricochet range and you get pretty thick even just a, with a little bit of look down, I guess, really, or maybe look up from the enemy tank, whichever way you want to look at it, if you can get hold down. Now, now hold down doesn't necessarily mean you've got angles, all right? Hold down can be the holes hidden, but if you get any kind of angled hold down, then you're going to start increasing the capability of that armor. Same thing from kind of coming out sideways. If they shoot too far left, you're going to get some pretty good armor. The side is not very thick at about, a, I want to say it's 80, 70. Straight on looks like it's 70, so that's decent to stop overmatching, unless it's a very high caliber weapon. So side scraping is okay on this tank. You can see that these spots on the turret are quite bouncy, but once you start to flat plate them at all, they get worse and worse until you really get to a very thin side of the turret right there. So this is a front on or slightly angled kind of guy and prefers to be making you look up towards him as long as you can also cover up this lower plate which can be a problem if, if people can get into it. Alright, so the armor profile is usable but not fantastic for a heavy tank. Okay, let's move on to a comparison amongst its peers. So we've got nine tanks in here. We've got the Progetto here, we've got a selection of different tech tree tanks and then I wanted to compare it against the Basante a little bit as well. Even though it is not a premium tank, those two are very very similar and one gives up something to get the other thing and vice versa. We also have the auto loading tech tree tanks, the 5100 and the Emil. Remember the Progetto is an auto reloader which means that it can load a shell while it's waiting for the rest of the shells. That's not really how you say it. Let's say it this way. The 5100 in the mill, they have to shoot all their shells and do a total reload, or they have to hit C and force a total reload, whereas the Progetto can fire two shells, start reloading immediately, fire the third one. So you can essentially have a shell at all times getting ready to fire. The problem with the Progetto and the Pizzante in that case is if you shoot two of the three, it's a really long reload to get the one shell. But still, you're still in the fight, and you're not sitting around for 40-odd, 30-odd seconds like you would with the auto loaders out there. Okay, So that is, is the difference. We look at this, and it's got an average damage of alpha of 320, which is right in there with a lot of these towards the low end. Uh, the 5100 has 300, but of course it's carrying six shells. This is only carrying three shells in its clip right there. So down near the bottom, even the Basante is at 360. This is going to play into what you're giving up when you do the play the Basante. 220 penetration is decent as a standard round. We'll take a look at the premium round in a minute. The time for the reloading, it's showing it as the best, but of course it's only comparing it against the Basante over there. So it's going to reload a little bit faster, at least early on. But then when you get to the third shell, it's longer. So I, okay, got it. Reload at 41 seconds, Basante at 42.19, so it reloads slightly faster. What happens though between it and the Basante, when we come down here, is because the Basante has so much more alpha, 40 per shell, it ends up with a pretty decent 1877, 1877 for its DPM, which is pretty good for an autoloader. In fact, the 5100 and the Emil are both at 17, and 19 and the Progetto 54 sits down at an absolutely abysmal 1540. I've said this multiple times. <clears throat> DPM is not a, a analog good bad thing in World of Tanks. It, it is effective DPM. It's the amount of DPM you can get down range. It has to do with pen, it has to do with the alpha, blah blah blah. Alright. So you can't just hang your hat and go, it's terrible because its DPM is bad, but it but its DPM is bad. So, I, you know, I can't argue with you if you say, Guido, it's DPM is bad. Because that's that's true. It's, <laughs> it's DPM is actually bad. And it's interesting against the Basante. So let's back up a little bit and look at some of their balancing factors. You've got an aiming time of 2.4 and 0.36 dispersion, where the Basante is sitting at 2.59 and 0 0.4. So between those two, what you're really giving up or getting, however you want to look at it, is with the Progetto 54, you're getting a more accurate gun with a considerable, considerably less DPM. And with the Basante, you're getting a, more, a derpier gun with considerably more DPM. That's an interesting trade-off because I, I think 
the amount of DPM is actually fairly significant in there. And when you look at the rest of the single loading or even the other two auto loading tanks, I mean, you get the Tiger II with 2100, the T32 with 2100. Everyone's up in the 18s to, to 2000s or slightly under it. And this guy is wallowing down here at 1540. The three shots is certainly an effective thing. We add that together. In theory, if you pinned all three of them, that would be 960 math in public. And if in fairly short order, realize there are three seconds between each round that you can shoot. That is an eternity in this game. Not very often are you, are you going to be able to jump out and somebody just waits for you to hit them three times in a row in nine seconds without doing something to get out of the way. All right, either they're very busy with somebody else or they've been pinned down by somebody else or they're another auto loader or auto reloader that's having a long time to reload, those kinds of things. So it's nice to have, but it's hard to employ at times. Minus nine on the depression is very nice, especially for a heavy tank. You notice the Basante is minus 10. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, survivability hit points on the low end at 1,450. Just a few more from the Basante, but certainly down there wallowing around at the low end of that. There's that tur turret armor I couldn't remember. The Basante is 185. This one is 180. Reference back to the tanks.gg. It's usable, but not amazing armor. We'll take a look at my stats and see how it holds up in game. And I guess the side was 100. That's the turret. It's 70 on the side of the hull and 100 on the side of the turret. So like I said, okay for the side scraping action to not get uh, overmatched. And then we've got the uh, hull armor upper plate at 100. And again, sloping is going to help out with that. All right, hull sloping is going to help out with that. As far as mobility goes, we've got uh, 48. So that's the weight load limit at 48. Speed is 45, but it's got a really nice specific power, which means that it gets up and goes pretty darn nicely. Okay, so 45 is relatively slow. The Passante shows 50. It almost never gets to 50, and it's very sluggish with a low specific power. Notice the very horribly sluggish VK100 has a terrible specific power of 9.96 and only goes 20 kilometers an hour total. So that, there's the slowest guy on the block right there. So kind of zippy. Really nice. That That is good. It can keep up and move with the mediums, and based on it having okay-ish armor. It really is kind of a medium killer and a good support gun for medium pushes. It can do the heavy thing. It can, but it also can flex over to the medium thing and as a support to mediums. That does give this tank a bit of flexibility on the maps on places that it can go and be effective, which, which is pretty nice. The traverses are decent. It's enough to keep up. It's the, it's the most uh, <laughs> stealthy heavy at tier 8 of this group. I don't know. Whatever that's worth. Why its view range needed to be 370, I don't know. Kind of a kick in the jimmy. It's just, I, I, can't, I can't square that, how that was really a, a balancing factor that needed to be hung on this guy that has a really low DPM and not really a fantastic alpha and not really an amazing pen. I, I feel like that 10, 10 less view range and I guess it's better than IS3 at 350 so at least it's that I just feel like that was kind of an unnecessary kick to this tank it really didn't need to have that quite that low of view range so as in comparison to all these things what I say as a general rule with this a decently accurate gun not amazing terrible DPM but you should have a fairly decently easy time hitting what you want to hit penning has it's hard to tell are you shooting a 9 or are you shooting a 10? It is a tier 8 tech tree tank, so it's going to see some of those as well. All right. I think it was useful to take a look at the Basante as well across the line here. And really, at the end of the day, Progetto 54, more accuracy, better gun handling. Basante, you're getting a, a, some more DPM. So it's more of a brute than the Progetto 54 is. The Progetto 54 leans a little bit more towards the the old, the Progetto 46, which is the medium, being a bit more of a faster, more flexible tank out there than, than the Basante. And it's also interesting to compare and contrast it against the Emil and the 5100, especially based on DPM, how those two tanks come out looking pretty good on DPM here at 19 and 1735, and the Progetto 54 is just sitting down at 1540. You know, the balancing factor there being the fact that the Progetto is not out of the fight as long as those two are. So that's where Wargaming has to be careful 
on how they balance the auto reloaders because if the DPM is too high, they become extremely powerful <coughs> for Jetto 46. I'm looking at you. All right, that is all I've got there. Let's move on to my stats in the 30 battles I had. All right, how did I do after 30 battles? I got a 57% win rate out of that, low sample size noted. 1,000 experience, which is anytime I can get about 1,000 or more in a tier 8, I'm doing pretty well. Hit rate is high at 82. That's above my standard hit rate, so very good. The accuracy of that gun is very useful. We'll take a look at my setup and what I did to make that even better. Damage ratio 1.45, destruction 2.15. Armor use is at 0.33, so we're starting to see an armor use that is down in the medium to no armor regime. At 0.5, it's situationally usable armor. Less than 0.5, especially you start to approach down to 2.5 and less, that becomes random armor or basically you're, you're just getting lucky bounces or you have one bit of armor that's useful, maybe just a turret or something like that. 0.33 is pretty low. A lot of that has to do with what you face, what kind of tanks, that kind of thing. At 30 battles, let's just say the sample size is low, so you have to take that with a grain of salt. But still, 0.33 is, is not fantastic. If we look at the Basante C45, same thing at 0.35 right there. Experience good, damage caused 1800. That's in the ballpark for my tier eights. I do have some that are higher, generally premiums. The tech trees are right around 1800 damage, tree, 1200. And the rest of this looks pretty good. Look at the Basante, 40 battles, but only a 45% win rate. For some reason, the Progetto 54 fit my style a little bit more. I think it's the mobility. It just gets around the map a little bit better than the Basante does. And it is difficult, at least for me, to carry with the auto reloaders and auto loaders because it can be very tricky timing reloads when you take your shots. It, it's something you really have to think about. And I am more of a shoot every shot I have at the moment I have it. What that causes me to do is get drugged down into the and wallowing around in that 14 second reload area or 12 second by the time you put um, vents and other things on. So I'm, I'm always in that really long reload instead of doing the smarter thing and be ready. For the regular auto reloaders, it's when do I reload that whole clip, take myself out of the battle, how do I employ that whole clip? So that's something that I do not do as well I, as I would like in this game. And I can see that the Basante, I struggle a lot more with it than the Progetto. Just based on also, I think, the mobility in there. So I think that's interesting. The Progetto, like I said, at 1855. We look at the 50 TPPR that I quite like. I, know I have 73 battles in it with a 66% win rate and a, a similar average experience. You can see that I'm actually doing more DPM at 1934. So this just has a low DPM. So time over a, a standard battle, how often you're able to get shots down, the, down range when you have such a a wide variation of DPM from say the 50 TPPR and the Progetto 54, given the same amount of time you're playing the tank, I just get less shots off. Good thing is that I am hitting with 82%, so I'm at least giving myself a chance to pin, and that's gonna keep the DPM or DPG damage per game up in the ballpark where it needs to be. So it's a bit of a trade-off with that. You're, you're trading with auto reloaders, the ability to really send the hurt down range fast you're trading that ability with potentially getting behind the power curve on reloads and getting caught out. Right, that's that balancing thing with this tank. But it's, you know, guys, it's right in line with all my other tanks. All right, let's take a look at how I set this thing up. This is not the crew I had in it. I had a very good crew in it. I've moved them on since to the tier nine. This is just a, the new crew in there as I start to work this tank up to 100 battles. But it was a I want to say a four skill crew, so I had a good crew. I'm running vents in the bonus slot. I'm running the IRM, and I am running a vert stab. You cannot run a rammer on this, and I think this is probably the best three things you can put on this tank. There may be some arguments potentially for hardening to help some of its durability, but I feel like this tank isn't a durability tank, right? This is the, I hate saying second line. I don't mean second line, but more of a support heavy run with the mediums, go with the heavies, but don't be the guy right up front unless you're top tier and you can be the bully. So this setup is gonna work out pretty good for it, I think. I did carry 12 APCR, and we said we would talk about the pen, it's 242. Now that's not great. It is APCR, which is good. Uh, if it was a heat round, you would expect to have more pen, so you're going to have to be a little bit careful about picking your shots, especially against nines and tens. 
242 is not going to brute force through much of anything, especially higher tiers and some of the hit more heavily armored tier 8. So you're going to have to be careful with that part. It is a weakness of this tank. Large kits. I didn't run any directives. I didn't run food. You could do that. I tended to get a lot of ammo racks. I actually noticed that on this tank. And I don't know if that's a thing or I just got unlucky in 30 battles. But it seemed like a, a decent amount of ammo racks on this tank. Which leads me to think maybe the fires would be right behind that. I didn't seem to have a lot that I noticed. But of course I'm running an automatic fire extinguisher. So if you wanted to up the rest of this rest of the stats on this and clearly you'd run some food in some kind of directive but as you can see the dpm as set up here is 1582 so i didn't get a whole bunch more out of running the vents right there so if you chuck some food on there let's just do that real time and see what we're going to end up having dpm wise how much is that going to help we get it up to 1652 that's fairly significant and if we dump a vent purge on there that will bring us up to 1,670. We brought our aiming time to 2.21 and our dispersion to 0 0.34, which looks at least to me about the best you're going to do on here. Potentially moving the vert stab over. Uh, that's for, yeah, rotation. I'll tell you what, some of these things I'm having a hard time keeping track of. There's so many of them. This is probably about the best you can do, I think. Although my crew is not great. So you throw a good crew in there, those numbers are going to be improved as well because you don't have snapshot and some of the other things going on there. All right, cool. Although this is stationary, right? So movement stuff, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think we've done everything we can do to make the stationary shotting of this tank as good as it's going to get. Yeah, you think so? I hope so. Maybe there's something else on there. I don't know. Let's move on to... Examples of gameplay. Three examples of gameplay with the Progetto CC55 mod. The first battle example is same tier, and like most tanks, a same tier or top tier battle is going to be really to your benefit. This one we're going to kind of see the accuracy work out. Though I believe a lot of these are pretty close. Excuse me, goodness gracious. A lot of these are pretty close shots. Horribly imbalanced map. Especially at this position, the south part of this middle area is completely at the advantage of the south spawn. It really needs to be worked on. There's several maps like that now. As the as metas metastasize, should we get into the whole map thing? I know we're doing a review, but goodness gracious, Wargaming, you've got to pay more attention to your maps and adjust them faster. So we're just going to come in here. This is the auto reloader action. When you get to a position where you get somebody who's not really paying attention and you're able to just drop two or three shells on people, you can see that as I'm reloading, it happens faster when I still when I have one of the shells in there. The other thing I haven't mentioned yet for the auto... I'll just let it go and you can watch. The other thing I haven't mentioned yet for the auto-reloading mechanic on these heavy tanks is you notice the little bracketed area. When, when you get your reload into the bracketed area... What that means is, if you fire, you have less of a penalty. And you will notice when I fired there, we'll just go back and take a look at it. It didn't go to the full reload for the next shell. All right, notice that I am on shell 2, working on shell 3, right? We've got 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Now, did it go to the, maybe it went to the full shell. Did I get it off, so to speak, before? It's hard to tell, but I think I fired before it was totally reloaded. And notice that the shell is coming back pretty dang quick right there. Boom. <clears throat> there we go. Now we've got two. And there there you have it. So when the brackets are getting hammered by the Su-130 PM, now I've got to be careful. There's the armor. Just didn't hold up. That dude just ab absolutely schwammered me. He's not reloaded. I'll take a, a quick shot into that bush. I don't think he's probably there anymore. If he's smart, he moved back. Wouldn't matter since I hit the dang rock anyway. So I'm going to change direction. I really don't want to keep poking where the Su-130 is. And I noticed that there's a, a bit of a breakthrough happening over here. I think this is one of my misses. Yeah, that goes into a rock. One of the few misses I had on this particular one, long range. But even so, that was a fairly tight dispersion. Just got a little unlucky. There was a good chunk of that rock that was in the way right there. So now we're fully reloaded. We have three shells, a GSOR, a couple auto loaders moving in. This is one of the big problems I have with auto loaders and auto reloaders. Two tanks like this rolling up on somebody ends their entire game so fast. 
before they can maybe get a shot or two. I was hoping he would shoot the GSOR, but I decided whatever, if you want to shoot me, go for it. But he can't, because he just doesn't know what to do. Now we've got the ISU-152K here. There's the mobility. Another reason I wanted to show you this particular this particular match is just the absolute mobility on this thing is pretty good. Put a couple shots on him and we move right through. Look how nice and fast this is. Any kind of downhill is really going to add to the mobility on this bad boy. I am about two shots from being out of the game, so I do have to be a bit careful. I'm kind of worried what the 53TP and his FL buddy up there are going to do. I'm also hanging out here waiting for my three shells to come back, right? Nice long reload, but I am still in the fight. So if something had showed up, I would have a shell. And that's the thing about the auto reloading mechanic that you get. All of a sudden, it looks like they're trying to even this game up. Thank goodness that guy missed. I think it's the medium. Yeah, it's the medium back there. The GSOR pushes into that dude. Let's see if we can get a shot on this guy. Look at that. Holy cow, nice. Fairly tight dispersion. Went right more or less where I was aiming. That's the accuracy of this. And again, kind of hanging out, waiting for my shell to come back. Now we've got the 34-2. Uh, GSOR took him out. Yep, there you go. Poor guy can't handle four GSOR shells in the face. This is a still not completely a win. 34-2 has come over here. He's kind of got eyes on. We see some scorpions. You know, two scorpion shots and I'm back in the garage. So keeping the T-34-2 alive would be great. All of a sudden I find this dude. See if we can move back to some cover. Maybe, yeah, a little bit more. See if we can catch him coming out. There we go. Now he's out. There's one. Enemy armor is Reload three seconds. Enemy armor Another shot. Now he's moving. His dispersion is huge, and he's making a runner. Because I didn't shoot the last shell, and unfortunately you didn't see it start reloading because the APCR is down to one shell. This is another tricky part about the auto-reloaders and auto-loaders as well. In the case of the auto-reloaders, though, if you only have one of the type of shell you're loading, that's all you're going to get. It won't put an APCR and then an AP-AP shell. You have to force it to go to the other shell type. So pay attention to what's going on with your shells right there. I fired that before I was really reloaded with anything else. So I've got that long reload. This is that part I was talking about where I am basically fighting with a really long reload. So I'm going to come in here. I get uh, I get the uh, ammo racked. So I want to make sure that that one shell I had, look, it was 27 to the second shell. I wanted to make sure, or 27 to the next shell, however you want to look at it. I wanted to make sure that that guy died right there. So 27 seconds was going to be a long time. So we got 2,893. There might have been another hit in there. Maybe I did hit the Su-130. I want to say maybe it was 3,000, but if not, at least 2,893, 420 assists, and we got three kills and a win on that one in a sort of close game, at least up till about the point we... We killed the last four or five guys who were low hit points. So you got to see the speed. You got to see the auto reloader mechanic. We talked a little bit about the special part where when it gets close to reloading, if you fire, you don't incur the whole penalty for the next for the next shell right there. And you saw a bit of the accuracy. If you're used to the Basante, you will notice that that will, altogether was just a much more comfortable and accurate kind of situation in that tank. So let's look at the second example's bottom tier. Well, like most tanks, bottom tier requires you to be a bit more careful and try to work around the edges as much as possible. I saw this, I saw this uh, deployment and immediately got a little bit grumpy and worried. It's just myself and STA-1 and the WZ-111-1FT. So three, three tier 8s, but... You know, there's a grill. I don't expect the grill to be up here. There's that nice accuracy once again. You really can't complain about that. But I get seen, and that was a bummer. I absolutely get hammered by the grill A. And then I get hit again, and thank goodness that did not take hit points off. So almost a huge mistake. I thought I was shooting where I wasn't going to be able to be seen. There's that nice accuracy again. But I think there was somebody a little bit too close down there, or maybe I was slightly too close to the bush. Somebody did mention something on the channel. I think that's important, and maybe I'll get into the settings if I can remember. To, there's a setting where the bush goes solid the moment that you have the camo. And the moment you, you go forward and don't have the camo, it goes away. It's not that graduated, which I find more visually pleasing. But as far as determining whether you're actually lit or not, 
uh, works much better. Now, there, I just like the accuracy. You don't really get that with the Basante, this kind of sniping capability with this thing. And I wouldn't call it necessarily a sniper gun at all, but it is fairly comfortable. Now I've got the E75 moving in here as well. Also, shooting APCR at long range is going to have a drop off on pen, so that's not ideal. I did find myself doing that with this tank on occasion, taking those long range shots with APCR and wishing that I had actually left it on AP because I think at the ranges they may have even been less pen than the regular AP would be. And that's pretty easy to do when the regular AP is 220 and you're only getting what 28 or whatever it is out of the APCR. I think you're going to find yourself 22, even worse. Out of the rest of the APCR, you're going to probably find yourself running out of pen pretty dang quick. So that guy, or at least be lower pen than the APCR. So this is pretty going pretty well, 1,551. We've already taken out almost half, well, at least a third of their team. Let's exaggerate and call it half, all right? <laughs> now it's a little easier, all right? Now it's really easy to call it half. <laughs> And we're just moving in here. I wanted to show this because it does have the capability of a bit of standoff right there. And if allowed to do its thing, much like any auto loader or auto reloader, if allowed to do its thing as far as pumping shots down range, get its full clip reloaded and start taking shots again, it can be an absolute beast. Oop. I remember I remember mentioning that on stream that holy cow, that shot just really went rogue on me couple long range shots and decide from there hey I'm on a reload now this is something to think about with auto reloaders and auto loaders I just took my three shots why sit there and wait why not just scoot up a little bit closer now you may want what well, you get a spot you may not want to get spotted I'll try to speak English here at some point you may not want to get spotted but if you are going to leapfrog forward and this is a good idea here because look this game is clean up on L2 let's get up there and get in their face and get our hit points so if you know you have to move go ahead and do it while you're reloading don't sit there uh, doing nothing I feel like I'm probably going to get hit here, maybe by the Centurion. He takes a shot and misses. That's fantastic. And really what I want to do is get up behind here where all the hit points are. The good news is some of the hit points come to find me. A little snapshot works out nicely. Moving shot works out nicely. And, uh-oh, <laughs> I'm out of shots. This is the old caught out part, right? Oh, my gosh, I'm in this auto reloader, and I'm now caught out. This sucks. Please don't hit me. Give me a Oh, there we go. There we go, crit no damage, you gotta love it. And we find this guy, so we'll just shoot him. So let's talk about this just for a second. Might have been a good idea for me to sort of hang out back here and get all three of my shots. This is where I, I the trap I fall into because I'm used to just firing the second that I've got a shot and probably why I am somewhat limited sometimes on my damage per game or the damage in a game because maybe if I'd have sat back here and got all three shots, I could have finished him off and taken a couple more. Instead, I just roll in here, take my one shot, now I'm backing out and I'm eating that 12, 13, 14 second reload right there. It can be very painful. That's why I'm pulling out right now, so to speak. I'm like, oh man, I don't want to get hit by this guy. There we go. I know there's several there. I see the guys coming in and they both turned around. So let's go ahead and get in there. Just about at the reload. I'm just going to come in and take shots on him. There we go. I get a bounce. Holy cow. It worked out. You can see that I did not eat the entire reload because of the brackets were up. So I'm getting a bit of a benefit for the time I spent reloading. Take that shot. And now we're just going for the ram because it's all over but the shout. I'm sorry to get one more hit point off that guy. Ah, it didn't quite work. He gets his damage. He survives that. Down he goes. So 3,277, 1,500 bounced and 317 assists. No kills but ends up being a pretty good game bottom tier all right yes bottom tier you have to be careful you can't just go rolling forward and for instance try to take on the type 5 face to face or even the conqueror or type 61 good news is i didn't see too many of them and was able to do more of the standoff thing but i thought it was a good example of lower tier gameplay in this tank let's take a look at my ace tanker All right, third and final example is another same tier. It's going to be my uh, first ace tanker in this tank, and I don't know what it was, third or fourth game, something like that. I don't know if I got another one after that. I don't think I did. Uh, this may have, I may have peaked at my third game in the uh, Prichetto 54. 
missed that going by. There, I didn't show you, but the reason I missed that shot is I was dicking around looking to see if I could shoot the ELC. So if I had used its speed to get up here, I would have got a shot on the side of the T-54 Mod 1. Rare instance of the armor working out for me. And you can see the other Progetto 54 has got aggressive. Then the T-69 gets aggressive, then you already decides to get aggressive with me. Sometimes when you get over aggressive like this on this map, it hurts a lot. They end up being able to wrap around you, but I'm seeing so many guys get in there and it just feels like at this point we're going to have a pretty good time on these guys. So I missed that shot running in. We'll move and get the reload. We've pushed them off the backside. That's the important part here, right? They're not up here threatening us. We have all kinds of guys back here keeping these dudes on us. Now it's time to get in behind these fellers and start ending them. I'll we'll take the low hit point guy first and bounce. That's a bummer. We've got a reload. I know I'm going to eat a shot. I was hoping to kill him, but we got a low roll of 282, so that was painful. Now I'm worried about him, and all of a sudden this is this is the part of this push that worries me because it's it's where you can get sandwiched pretty easily. He missed, thank God. E75 misses, but his reload is long enough that I was ready. And again, here I am kind of taking those singular shots, but I've put myself into a position where it's hard to allow it to reload every excuse me, reload everything. So at this point I'm thinking, well crap. I got the mod one. If he kills the E75, can come back to the corner. I don't know what's here. I think nothing at this point because they haven't come around and killed him. That's the big key. Is there a big stack of guys here or not? If there's not, you're in pretty good shape. If there is, there's a guy there, there's guys here, and guys here, you're in a sandwich situation, and it is not so much good. But you can see the GSORs moving up, the IS-22 is moving up, the T-28 prototypes moving up. There goes the E75. Now this dude has some lovely back armor, which it looks like maybe front armor. I don't. Yeah, it is his front armor. So I avoid that and go for the turret. And the enemy team has camped. They've camped a lot of guys. They sent several guys down the south, which we did actually too. Finally, their dudes over on the corner here show up, but they never got aggressive. Really, if that 101 had come around the corner, things would have changed quite a bit. But it looks like he's being, being very passive. Finally, I am getting to the point where I'm reloading all of my shots. But you will notice it is two to three, so this is not a, a done deal yet. We need to be careful about pushing in on these dudes and just letting them take us out. The Carnarvon doesn't hit very hard, but he shoots fast. He can pin you down. Then we've got a 101 who hits hits extremely hard. So between the Carnarvon pinning you down and the, the 101, there's still a guy in the ramp. So I'm thinking, okay, this is not great. We're trying to figure this out here. 101 fired, so I'm just going to take the possibility that the Carnarvon hits me. That guy missed. That's good. We'll go ahead and shoot him. And now we don't have a, a round, so we'll go ahead and pull back. <clears throat> Down goes the Progetto 54. That means there's only two there. Lots of TDs on the enemy team, but I feel like a good number of them are hiding in the back. 101 fired, so we'll just come in there and get a shot on his lower plate. See if we can get a shot on his side, which he allows me to get. We'll pull back and we'll work the reload. So as I've mentioned multiple times, if the enemy team allows you to run this tank like you want to, instead of them forcing you to run it like they want to, you can have a good day. I'm just going to sit here and get my reloads on. Carnarvon's there. There's still a 101 sitting there. No, actually, he's dead. Is he dead? He's dead. Never mind. Sorry. We get stunned. We're at 1953. And we're just about... See how long that is? I mean, it's just forever trying to get all three shields. That's why a lot of people kind of rec rec recommend... I'm just going to say recognize. Recommend that you just shoot one and then move on. But this is the shutdown capability of this tank. Boom. 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 All right. Just right around him. Three shells. Bang, bang, bang. Back to the garage for that guy. And now back to the super long reload. 2751 damage. ISU is up there. The GSOR down below. Our GSOR is pushing in on him. They knock a couple of our tanks out. I don't think it's enough to kind of bring him back, but it looks a little worrisome. But I think it's pretty much clean up on aisle three at this point. We'll just push in. There's their... Missed that guy, but we do get spotted. 
I was going to shoot, but I wanted to get all three of my shells, and that was going to be kind of an iffy shot. So we let that go. I turned just in time for the art. He to miss me. I was headed that way, and I sort of changed my mind end game there and decided to come around this corner instead of going the other way. He gets a shot on me. I'll accept that. Hit him. Zoom on in on this guy. Boom. Down he goes. Fantastic. And I know there's an ISU around this corner. There's plenty of people coming in, so I think I'm just going to take the shot I can get without getting nuked. Oh, geez. There he is. Ow. Thank goodness he was firing HE, because otherwise I kind of go away right there. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Boom. Trying to get around him. 3,836, 256 assists, 4 kills, same tier, ends up being an ace tanker. Like I said, I think the first and only that I had in the game. I wanted to show this one because when the enemy team allows it to do its thing, it's very powerful. Problem is, as I pushed forward like that, I described that one situation, I would have been probably shredded if they'd have moved up and come around that corner a little bit. Now, we had a lot of guns back there, so I don't know if it would have worked. But uh, if they'd have had some more tanks there, our aggressive push could have got shut down. That is one of the ways on this map teams lose early when they get a little over aggressive thinking they got them and then there's the enemy slower tanks show up. Now they have you in a crossfire and that is no bueno. But that is not what happened. This tank was allowed to work the way it works best and that's when you're going to get the really top end results out of it. Let's wrap this up. All right, everybody, that is my review of the Progetto 54, otherwise known as the Progetto CC 55 Mod 0.5 for Italian Heavy Auto Reloading Tech Tree Tank. Well, what do I say overall? I like this tank. Slightly above average to above average, especially for a tech tree tank. I actually, I personally like it better than the Basante. I know other people would rather have the Basante because of the DPM. I just find this one's DPM a little bit more useful in more situations. Whereas the Basante is a bit more of a brute force brawling-ish auto reloader where it can kind of run things over with its higher alpha. It hurts a bit more when it hits and it's got that better DPM. This one just is a little bit more maneuverable. The gun handling's a bit better and I just find it to be more useful in more situations. I do especially like the idea that it can run with the mediums to some extent and can be a, a good fire support for mediums. Is that always applicable to World of Tanks and the way people play it in pubs? Not necessarily, but it is certainly not a bad tank, and that's very good. I like it as a tech tree tank. I like that the premium version, the Basante, is not head and shoulders above it. Maybe slightly in, in some situations, but overall this is a better all-rounder than the Basante is, just based on gun handling and speed. I don't think you'll go wrong with this. I think the tier 9 is pretty good too. I'm on that right now. We'll get to that review when I finish up the grind on that thing. But I think you'll enjoy this tank. Uh, it is not overpowered. You're not going to dominate the battlefield every time you play it. But you're going to have a very comfortable, maneuverable, good tank. And as long as you play it to its strengths, this is one of those tanks that you have to play to its strengths. Otherwise, you're going to get caught out. As long as you do that, you're going to have a good time with the old Progetto CC 55 Mod 54. That's all I've got for this review. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think down below. Am I right? Am I wrong? Feedback, things I can do better, different, all that kind of stuff. That's all I've got. We will see it.